Hello and welcome to another edition of PCHEM Lab Screencast. I'm Jeff Yarger and today we're going to introduce some uh, electronic structure um, computational uh, software programs um, with uh, the focus being on Gaussian and, and some others that are available uh, as well. And I start by saying that in physical chemistry lab or in physical chemistry research, you know, a lot of, of research that goes on is computational or theoretical in nature and so I think it's important that even at the undergrad level we start introducing computational as a way to predict what's going on and and do experiments on a computer to help give us uh, indication for, for chemical concepts in thermodynamics, kinetics, quantum mechanics, statistical mechanics, etc. Um, at Arizona State University, we're lucky to have a Gaussian uh, site license, and so we get to use Gaussian for free, and, and so do all the students. However, I'll introduce some other programs for those that uh, don't have this uh, a free ability to, to get Gaussian or, or prefer to use some other programs. And so we'll start there by saying uh, Gaussian is probably one of the most popular uh, ab initio electronic structure calculations, and uh, you can go to um, Gaussian.com, which is where I am. And it shows you their products. Gaussian that was released in 2009 is kind of the current version. And it tells you, you know, uh, something that it's electronic uh, structure modeling calculation and gives you an overview. Uh, what I like about this is it exists for Windows, uh, Macintosh, and uh, Linux operating systems. And it has uh, one of the better uh, front in uh, graphical user interfaces, which is uh, called Gauss View. And again, it runs on PCs, Macs, and um, Linux operating systems. So uh, the pricing is fairly reasonable for students. However, it, it, it is uh, one of uh, you know uh, the more costly programs, and uh, there are some freeware uh, version alternatives. Uh, what you're going to be introduced to initially uh, when you do are different types of uh, Gaussian calculations and it has a wide range. Um, you can calculate energies, you can optimize geometries. One of the ones we're going to start with are, is looking at this frequency which also gives you thermochemical uh, analysis data and, and so we're going to be uh, looking at that initially. And it, it tells you a fair amount about the different types of calculations and what you can do. And you can see there's a large range. You can do thermochemical data, you can calculate uh, things like UV vis spectra, IR and Raman spectra, uh, solvation, enthalpies, you know, um, NMR parameters, etc. So there's a lot of things you can do with these uh, programs to give you a, a, a sense of what's going on and to compare to experiments that you could measure. Um, so what we're going to start with, like I said, is, is thermochemistry in Gaussian, and I, I point you to, uh, you know, a place here. There's a white paper called Thermochemistry in Gaussian. Uh, it, it's a little old. It was written in 2000, but, but describes in a fair amount of detail um, how to set up, and it gives you a nice example um, uh, of thermochemistry. Um, and so it gives you some output examples, but it goes through an entire uh, worked out example um, you know, for uh, an ethyl radical uh, hydrogenation and, and gives you some of the energies you calculate and how you can do this, etc. So I advise looking at this and, and all Chemistry 343 students have this at disposal, but it's, a, it's available on the web. Um, before I show you any Gaussian, I want to quickly say that by no means is this the only program you could use, and I want to just introduce a couple others that I consider fairly good. The first one, and the one I learned first, is GAMES, which is very similar. Um, so General Atomic and Molecular Electronic Structure System. Uh, it's maintained by Iowa State University and, and the Gordon Research Group. Um, it's free, it's available uh, for uh, Mac, Windows, and, and Linux operating systems. Um, you know, it's it's a very nice program, uh, and it does have some graphics third-party um, programs that, that interface with it to help you be able to visualize some of the output and even uh, you know create some of the input, etc. However, I will say that um, you know it is more difficult to use than Gaussian just because the graphical user interface analogous to Gauss View and 
um, you know, doesn't handle both the input and output near as elegantly as, as Gauss View does. But, you know, the price is definitely right. Um, and so, I, again, you can uh, go to the game's website to get more information. If you're using Linux specifically, um, NWKIM is a wonderful program and probably as advanced or more advanced um, than Gaussian uh, is freely available for anyone in academics. is a very nice program. And again, they have some um, third-party um, uh, graphical user interfaces that you can use along with it as well. There's so those are two that are represent free programs. So that if you're doing this at home or if you're doing this at a place where you don't have Gaussian, uh, you can use those programs. There are also some that are fairly cheap, especially for students. The the ones I like to mention are Spartan, uh, which is through Wave Function, and they have a fifty dollar student license, which includes their graphical user interface. And this is you know on par as far as ease of use goes. Uh, with Gaussian, not quite as on par with um, uh, its, its uh, sophistication, but, but for everything you would need at the undergraduate and even graduate level, it, it's, it's pretty good. And again, it supports Windows, uh, Macintosh, and Linux operating systems. So that's good. And one of my favorite is uh, ADF, and, and this is a really great program. Unfortunately, it's also fairly expensive, but I like to mention it just because it does some really uh, wonderful things and has an amazingly good graphical user interface and, and uh, doing everything from gas phase through uh, solid uh, materials in this. So with that as a general overview of what you have, I want to uh, say a few things about just getting started with uh, some of these programs. And the one I'm going to introduce today is the one that we have a site license for at Arizona State University, which is Gaussian and, and Gauss View. And what I want to say is when you install this, and I'm not going to go through the installation process, but it basically in your applications folder, so slash applications, it creates um, two folders. It creates one for Gaussian 09. It just calls it G09. And so I can go in there and you can see there's not really anything directly to run in here. In fact, all the executables, you could, you have to really run this from a command line directly unless you also install Gauss View, which it just uh, labels it as GV um, here. And so Gauss View does have a GView application uh, and I put it onto my desktop right here. And this interfaces with Gaussian and really provides a graphical user, interfa user interface for both the front end files, the input files, as well as viewing the output files as well, which is one of the really good things about Gaussian is, is Gauss View and its ability to interface nicely with the computational engine in Gaussian. But I do want to say something about uh, the Gaussian directory, which is they have a whole bunch of test files here. They're what they call .com files is their input decks. Um, and so, and then what they list in their AI64 directory, because this is a 64-bit operating system, are all their log files, which are the output for those different input decks. Now, we're in the applications directory, which is, is root owned and is something that's available to all users. So what I did was just take some of those, but you can copy those. You just can't read and write to that directory. And so you can run into a lot of problems with Gaussian by trying by default to read and write to um, these G09 and GV directories within applications. This applications directory is for all users within the Mac OS. You should take anything you want to do out of there and move it to a local directory where you have control. So uh, that's, you know, I've moved some of these to the desktop. And so what I've done is taken several of the test files and, um, you know, the .com files and moved them over to a Gaussian test directory on my um, uh, thing here. And I strongly urge you to uh, all of these programs, whether it be games or NWKIM, they all come with a lot of test or example files that you can go through uh, to look at. So so like I said, I've, I've moved that uh, Gauss View uh, application down here where I can start it. So I'm just going to um, start this up real quick. And this is pretty common. It tells you uh, the version you have. So we have Gauss View 5. It gives you some tips and some of these are very good. And then it basically has two windows here. One is, is that the default uh, that gives you all of the different systems. So this is how I can build different molecules, benzene rings, or, or different um, you know, uh, elements, etc. So I can um, 
add anything I want and this window is what I'm going to build the molecule in. Um, so, or I can read in one of my existing test files. And so, you know, initially it's often nice to look at some of these test files, like for example, test01 here. Um, you know, we can look at that file. Um, so, or, or let's just look at this test42 file, and I'm just going to drag it onto the um, uh, a text editor, and so we can kind of see what it's uh, doing here. So it's uh, it's it's a frequency calculation for water frequencies and this is defining the Z matrix for water it's telling us our connectivities here and a, a few things about what type of uh, calculation it's going to do etc so that's the input deck uh, let's read that directly into Gaussian and so now you can see like it'll read that in and it does it in a much nicer graphical way so instead of looking at the Z matrix we can kind of look at the molecule and now we can go to calculate and it has those setup parameters that are in that input deck for us if we were doing this from scratch we would have to define what they are but these are defined in the existing test 42 file and so it gives us some idea of how to set up some of these by looking at it. we can submit this we can save it as the same name it is or as a different name. If we ask it to save it as the same name, it's just going to overwrite it, which is another reason to move it to your uh, standard directory. So if we move it, um, it's going to start calculating, and we can even watch that on our activity mar uh, monitor here. Um, and when it's done, it'll let us pull up the results, and it has a nice summary of those results as well. So we can look at a summary you know, of those uh, results and, um, and you know, what it, it calculated, etc. So uh, you can go through a lot of these different uh, test files uh, to get a sense for it. And then after you start doing some of that, going through some of the test files and going through it, again, copying them from the G9009 directory onto your local desktop, the .com files, looking at them in a text editor, reading them into Gauss View, seeing what they do, running the calculation, etc. Now you, the next stage is to kind of start, you know, building a few things yourself. So, you know, let's, for example, um, you know, build where we have a water molecule here. So I just built an oxygen and it puts uh, hydrogens around it, right? So now I can go to calculate and now uh, let's uh, do a optimization and frequency calculation. And, and as you can see, there's a lot of different parameters here and I'm not going to take the time to go through all of them except to say that, you know, the documentation both you know, online, you can start getting a sense for what all of, you know, these dif different frequencies um, or, or different parameters do. And I'm going to keep it as a fairly, you know, so it comes up with basically a default set of parameters, you know, with a default method, you know, ground straight Hartree Fock with a, a spin and, and you know, a pretty simple basis set, so not very complicated. You could make it more complicated, etc. And I can submit that job and we'll save it as, as just uh, water underscore test. Um, I'll save that and then it'll start calculating it. And when it's done calculating it, I can pull up that log file and look at the results. So I can look at the results. It showed me that it only took one second to do this calculation. It tells me the energy in Hartree's, you know, the dipole moment of the molecule. So this is kind of a summary of that result. So I asked it to not only optimize the molecule, but also to do uh, fr uh, vibrational calculations. And so here's the vibrations it calculated for that molecule. And it'll even you know, show me some animations of those vibrations. And I can make it animate, you know, with uh, uh, more or less of a displacement, um, you know, and faster and slower. You know, I can make it do it faster and, and slower, and I can rotate and see what that one is versus that one versus that one. And I can even look at the, the spectrum and kind of pick which one I want to go to and this is showing the IR spectrum etc so I think you you get a sense that I mean it, it has a very powerful uh, front-end um, calculator or, or front-end associated with it to look at some of these results um, now what do some of the results 
you know, look like, well, those results are actually, it's, it's pulling everything from this log file. And, and so we can look at that in a text editor as well. And you'll see that, you know, this log file is long and it gives, it told us that it did a normal termination, how long it took. And these are, it's giving you all of the different parameters here. So it's telling you what the vibrations are, you know, what the vibrational energies are, you know, it's giving you right here, you know, some of the, you know, heat capacity, entropy, enthalpy points, at, etc. So it's giving us some of the thermodynamic parameters within this file. Unfortunately, Gauss view doesn't read those out directly. You often have to go in and look for these thermodynamic parameters directly in the log file. So I think I'm going to stop there as a, as a first simple introduction to electronic structure calculations and how to get started. Uh, there's lots of online tutorials for Gaussian and Gauss view, and I hope I've given you a few of the resources of where to start, you know, playing around with this program to get familiar with it uh, yourself.